Hollow Keir, the unofficial Hollow Live fan game inspired by games like Vampire Survivors and Magical Survival. Playing the game is quite simple. You run around beating up fans who drop XP, you then pick up the XP to get stronger so you can beat up more fans and pick up more XP. A simple premise, but if you play the game for long enough, you'll realize that there is quite a lot of depth and strategy to it. And I'm here to provide some insights on how to get better at playing the game. Why am I doing this? Because I'm a naturally altruistic person and not a justification for how much I've played this game. When you start the game, you'll get to pick a character which you'll run around with. Your weapon attacks will kill fans and the fans will drop XP. When you pick up enough of the XP, you will get a level and can then pick one of four upgrades. These upgrades can unlock your passive skills, marked with a gold star, upgrade your starting weapon, or collect new weapons and items, marked with a sword and green shirt, respectively. With each subsequent level up, you will continue to get more upgrades for your weapons, items, and skills. Each character has three passive skills, a starting weapon, as well as a special ability, which I will get to later. Their starting weapon can be upgraded up to six times, with the seventh upgrade being the weapon's awakened form, which is a more powerful form of said weapon. A character's three skills are passive effects that will take effect once you upgrade them. They can each be upgraded a maximum of three times. Every character's starting weapon, skills, and special ability are all unique to them, meaning no two characters will play the same way, so be sure to find which character suits your playstyle the best. Or try learning them all if you're deranged. When you progress through a game, different types of enemies will appear. They will try to move towards you, and when they touch you, they will do damage for as long as they are touching you. Enemies don't despawn once they hit you, so you'll have to kill them yourself. As stated before, when you kill an enemy, it will have a chance to drop XP. However, enemies can also drop other things, though this is usually up to chance. They may drop hamburgers, which are food items to heal you, holo coins, a meta currency which you can use to get new characters or upgrades into shop, XP magnets, which suck all the XP and holo coins into stage to you, and anvils, which you can use to upgrade weapons and items. Unlike with the level up, anvils allow you to choose which weapon or item to upgrade, and in the case of weapons, allow you to overlevel them beyond their max level, though at the cost of hollow coins. Every few minutes, a larger version of an enemy will appear. This is a mini boss, and killing it will drop a hollow zon box. A hollow zon box will not only give you a lot of coins, but it will also give you a new weapon, item, or an upgrade to one of your existing weapons or items. At the 10 and 20 minute mark in the game, there will appear a boss. Bosses are unique enemies to the stage and also come with attacks of their own that you will have to avoid. Killing them also drops hollows on boxes and when you kill the boss at the 20 minute mark, you will have won stage mode of the game. Now that you know the basics of playing Hollow Keyer, here are two tips that I would give to any new player getting into this game. Tip number one. Learn how to strafe. In Hollow Keir, every character starts with a unique weapon exclusive to that character, and while the effects and abilities of these weapons will vary, nearly all of them have one thing in common. They require you to aim. When you run in a specific direction, you will automatically aim in that direction. By hitting the strafe key, the default of which is Z, you will lock your aim in the direction you are currently running, allowing you to run in other directions while still aiming in the original direction. <laughs> Uh, alright then. Tip number one, learn how to aim. Weapon can only attack in certain area. Enemies come all around, direct area of weapon to hit enemies. Moving on. Tip number two, upgrade the shop. So, you've completed your first game, and now are sitting pretty on a small fortune of coins. What's the first thing you do? Do you go to the gacha banners and get a new character? No! Doing this will only hamper your progress. All the later stages in the game are balanced around the assumption that you have purchased certain shop upgrades. So, if you don't have them, the game will only get harder for you. So, which shop upgrades should you get? The first two upgrades you should get are the special ability, which costs 500 coins, and growth, which costs 1000 coins. The special ability unlocks the special ability for all characters, which is an active skill that is unique to each character. When you are in the game, there is a gauge that slowly charges your special over time, and when it is filled, you can activate by pressing the special attack key, which by default is X. This upgrade is important, as while some character specials are complete junk, many characters have either completely broken specials or specials that are essential for their kit to function, meaning this upgrade is going to become the most important one you can get. The second major upgrade is the growth upgrade, which makes it so that every time you gain a level in a game, your character's damage increases by 2%. After you get these two upgrades, I would also personally recommend you get at least one level in the regeneration upgrade. Unless you are a Toho player or something, you're probably going to get hit in your early runs, and each hit takes away a portion of your health. 
So unless you acquire some kind of item or skill that can heal you, that means each hit will add up and lower your health significantly. Having at least one level in regeneration at least gives you a small amount of breathing room in the game. It's not essential if you're playing a character with passive healing as one of their skills or if you're incredibly good at the game, but it's a personal recommendation. So after you got those upgrades, what upgrades should you prioritize? The first upgrade you should prioritize is the money gain up. This increases the amount of holo coins you can get in a game. Maxing this out early will allow you to get more holo coins, which in turn will allow you to get upgrades faster which will then make the game easier. You should then prioritize getting the XP gain up, and then I recommend getting all the other stat boosts after that. Depending on your playstyle, you may prioritize some stats over others. If you run around too much and leave your XP scattered all over the place, then getting the pickup range will be important for you. Keep getting swarmed and losing too much health and dying, then getting defense up and health up are important. The stats you prioritize should help balance your shortcomings as you learn how to play the game. So that's a basic rundown of Hollow Cure. I left out a lot of details as this was supposed to just be a basic overview, and in later videos I I will go in depth on all the different characters, weapons, items, and systems that the game has. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for when I release the next video. Until then, happy holocuring!